All right, we're working on a 2003 Chrysler Town & Country. My students and I started on this yesterday and we stopped at a certain point. Basically, we got the car to act up. The complaint is an intermittent no start. And we really pretty much stopped at that point. We got it to die and we did a couple of checks and I wanna get you guys up to speed with where we are. The first thing would be to warn you guys about using owner's cards, insurance cards in the car. You take a look at this insurance card. I'm going to block the other personal info here, but look at the insurance card. What does it say? 2002 Chrysler Town and & Country. And I'm looking at the 10th VIN here. Let's see. Yeah, the 10th VIN is a 2 on this, and that is wrong. The vehicle is a 2003. Uh, let me look at this VIN number for a second. Yeah, this VIN number that's listed on this insurance card is not even the right VIN number for this car. So it's not just the 10th VIN that's off, it is the whole thing. And yesterday, if you guys remember, we had a no communication. Let me see if I can recreate that. Right now I have this properly identified and you can see the trouble codes we have in here. It's a P1389 auto shutdown relay, uh, a generator field circuit, PO. P0622 and then P0320, no crank reference. So we have good direction with these trouble codes for sure, but when we started on this vehicle, we entered it differently. I'm just gonna go one year back if I can here. Let me change vehicles. <clears throat> Do you guys remember, did we do automatic ID on this? Probably not. No. So it was entered manually. K13 key is what it's telling me to use for this. We put the K13 key in here. See, I remembered them telling me K13. It's asking for the K13. Hit continue. I have the key on right now, go to codes and look at that, no communication. So think about how important this step is. We had a vehicle that is an intermittent no start. We started the van up, got it hot, it shut down. And what we found was that the scan tool wouldn't communicate. When you have a vehicle that's not starting at the same time you have a communication problem, that changes your direction. You know, we start thinking main computer problems when it's critical that you get the right year. Look what we have, no communication. This has nothing to do with our intermittent no start. And what we had too, we also had a bunch of clicking that was going on under the hood. When this van died and would not restart, the, this relay right here and this relay right here, can't see that one too well, these two relays we're clicking very, very rapidly, and these two happen to be the auto shutdown and the fuel pump relay. And we're gonna talk more about those in a second. And the other thing that we noticed when this thing died is we had no spark. When we tested for spark, we just pulled this one plug wire off the coil and we checked for spark out of that tower and we had none. And that's really as far as we got yesterday. When we were doing these checks under the hood, no spark, no start, we had no communication with the scan tool. That bothered me a lot. And then what we found is we entered the wrong year. So let me get you back to the scan tool and let's uh, change vehicle here again and put in our right vehicle. Um, engine automatic with AC, notice K25 key, completely different key. No wonder it wouldn't talk to us. No wonder it was a no communication. You talk about something that would throw you off as a as a rookie in direction. You know, where are you going to go? The car doesn't start, has no spark. Relays are clicking rapidly, going nuts, and the car doesn't communicate. Sure seems like a main computer problem. And, and if you guys remember from yesterday, 
we were talking about that very thing until we realized what happened, and that was we had the wrong year. So just a quick note before we continue to you guys, before we ever start chasing a vehicle with a no communication problem, the first thing you do is double check your VIN and make sure it's correct, make sure you have the right year, and make sure you're using the right chip. Um, Austin, you mentioned pin 16, making sure we have power. That would be another one that we wanna make sure we do. However, in this scenario, when you lose power to a data link connector on pin 16, that doesn't cause a no start, no spark situation. So that would be two separate problems in that case. Different subject with no comms. That is not what we have. We clearly have direction on this car. Crank sensor signal is primary suspect for what we have. It's a no start when it gets hot, we lose spark, we have a crank sensor trouble code. Uh, we also have an auto shutdown relay code, I'm worried about him too, not worried about this generator field code. What we're going to do from this point is I'm going to start the car, get it warm, and see if we can make this thing shut down. Uh, you know what we'll, we'll do though, and we'll save a step. What I'll connect to is the crank sensor with the scope. And uh, in fact, we'll grab cam and crank together so we're ready to go when this thing shuts down. So next step will be connect to the cam and crank sensor signals. We'll look at scan data. We'll look at scope while it's running and then we'll look at it too when it dies and see what we're missing. All right, so it's important that we have good direction when we go to the car to connect up to the cam and crank. And what I did is pulled up a wiring diagram and we're looking at my cam and crank sensors right here on the screen. And uh, you can see that they share an eight volt supply and in reality that's more of a nine volt supply i don't know why chrysler continues to produce the material saying it's an eight volt it's nine volt when you check it so we'll call it eight to nine volt supply they share that uh, it has a uh, ground that is also shared although they look like different colors on this diagram don't they they're not the dark blue uh, with a dark green tracer, look, on the, on the uh, crank, dark blue with a dark green tracer on the cam, so they share grounds, they share a feed or supply, they share a ground, and then the signal is dark blue and gray for the cam. I want to remember that color, and there's a reason why, and that is I am going to be checking these at the computer instead of at the sensor because of location. So dark blue and gray is the cam and then brown with a light blue is the crank okay crank sensor is driven off of the um, flywheel there are teeth on the flywheel for the crank and the cam position sensor there's teeth on one of the cam gears that's where we're getting these signals from definitely easier to check it at the computer especially because of uh, location of these sensors and the fact that this thing leaks oil like a sieve and there's oil everywhere under the hood of this car. It's pretty nasty. We're going to pin 32 and 33 on the engine computer. That would be, they would be right next to each other and what we're hoping for is that we can find those very easily. So let me get you a shot of that. Okay, in the past, these have been pretty easy to identify because they're usually up top right here on the computer. And what was my colors again? Brown with the light blue and dark blue and gray. And this is pretty, pretty typical of these Chryslers that it's, it's the um, third one down. So looking at this green with an orange right here, there is my um, brown with a light blue right below that, and then there is my dark blue with a gray. So those two wires, I'm going to T-pin both of those, that'll be my camera crack signals. Something else I want to point out while we're here, looking at the wiring diagram. We're going to duplicate this to show it to you again, but remember yesterday those relays were clicking? All right, I want you guys to see something with the auto shutdown relay, which is right here, and the fuel pump relay, which is right here. Where we want to focus 
is the control side of the relay. If the relays are clicking on and off rapidly, that means the control side of that circuit is turning on and off rapidly. Relays, uh, the clicking part, the load side, isn't going to do it on its own. We have to be creating a magnetic field. So our focus on relays that are clicking rapidly would be on the control side, the coil side of the relay. The brown white wire right here and the brown wire right here, we wanna follow those. There's my auto shutdown relay right here. It's control, it's brown and white. And then here's your fuel pump that's brown. See, this is a little bit misleading. What you need to understand about Chrysler's, and they've done this forever. And if you want info on this, I have this lecture. It's section 15, fuel pump electrical circuits, where I go through the operation of these a little bit more. We're gonna do it very quickly here. Uh, that would be section 15 in my book or section 15 lectures. What the Chrysler systems do with the fuel pump relay control and the auto shutdown relay is there is one transistor that controls both of those. And that transistor, it is ground side switch. This is inside the computer. And the computer controls obviously the base of the transistor to turn these circuits on, okay? So why were, in fact, what we did is when we heard all the clicking under the hood, we pulled two relays and my guess was it was the fuel pump and auto shutdown relay and we were right. How did I know that? I knew that because they share one driver, okay? On older Chryslers, they only had an auto shutdown relay. They did not have a separate fuel pump relay and that auto shutdown relay would control the fuel pump. The newer Chryslers, they separated the two. They run a fuel pump relay along with the auto shutdown, except they still share the same driver. So essentially they split the loads. Where are we with this car, with this circuit, this ASD up here, or this one down here, either design, it doesn't matter. The, the fact that both the ASD relay and fuel pump relay are clicking on and off rapidly would indicate to us there's an RPM signal occurring when there shouldn't be. This is a little bit different approach than we took yesterday. Why? Because yesterday we had a no-com. We had a no-com with these relays clicking. What were we worried about? Do you remember? I said main powers, main ground. Something wrong with that computer was our thought. Here we had the car ID'd wrong. Go into the car, we have a crank sensor code. Car shuts off when it gets hot. Relays click rapidly. We're going to have a crank or cam sensor signal that's occurring on this engine when, this, when these relays are clicking on and off. This circuit, this ASD or fuel pump circuit, you have to have an RPM signal coming in for the computer to energize that circuit. Okay, remember that? We're going to see, we're going to see it on this car here in a minute. As far as the separation of these, I guess what we'll do is we'll look at the fuel pump circuit real quick. And that's this, this, uh, that's auto shutdown. There's my fuel pump, it's dark blue and orange. And that's it, it just controls the pump, nothing else. So they pulled the pump out of that circuit, then everything else the ASD is going to power. So the ASD uh, powers up, as you can see the splice right here, the alternator field. Remember we had a field code too, didn't we? That's part of what we're doing. We have a generator field trouble code. It also powers up part of the computer. And I say part of the computer because the computer controls the relay, but then also it powers up the other side of it. Um, it comes down to this splice, and that's going to be my ignition coil. Comes over here, another splice. It powers up the O2 heater. And another splice right here following this line powers up the O2 heater. And then one more brown and white on the third, not really a pin, but on this diagram, three on the diagram powers up the injectors. So what they do on the, on the newer ones, they separated the fuel pump out of the circuit. 
but it's still one driver. Do you guys understand what I'm, t what I'm saying to you? Whether it be the older design where we have just an ASD relay and it powers all of this, or the newer design where they separated the ASD and fuel pump relay, these circuits are still controlled off of one driver. So we need an RPM signal for that to happen. You turn the key on, you get a prime. From there, you need an RPM signal. These relays were clicking on and off. So what's that mean to us? with these relays clicking on and off with the key on. When this truck or van died and we had no spark and the relays were clicking on and off, do you guys understand my suspicions of a RPM signal that's occurring with just the engine off? Like something's crazy going on with the sensor and it's wigging out, computer seeing an RPM signal, which is why it's clicking these relays on and off. Now I may be wrong about that, maybe it's uh, uh, the reference circuit's being shorted out and, you know, the computer's doing something goofy with this circuit. Here's what we don't want to do. We do not want to start chasing these codes individually. This auto shutdown relay code we're looking at, this generator field code we're looking at, and the crank sensor code we're looking at. Do you guys understand that we could have an input problem that's causing all of this? So that's why our focus is on the crank and on the cam. Let's get connected to it see what it looks like. All right, you see our yellow and green channels are connected to the cam and crank signals right at the computer. And there's a few ways that we can set this up. We can actually look at scan data and, and uh, sensors at the same time, which is what I want to do. But to do that, we have to pull up the windows in a different format. If you guys remember when we did our, our Varus training, I showed you how to do that. This will be a refresher on that. What I I want to use is my scope, but I can't go to my scope multimeter. I need to go through my component test meter so I can pull up both at the same time. So through my component test meter, I need to pick something that's going to be cam or crank related, you know, that will give me that kind of a, a time base. Uh, I guess what I'm saying would be, I want to make sure I'm not picking something that would use the graphing multimeter. I need to pick something that uses the scope. And so maybe one that would use the graphing multimeter would be uh, the map sensor. So map DC volts, I'll show you. View meter on the map. And what you're going to see here in a second is my time base for this map. Let me full screen that. Notice my time base doesn't go any lower than one second. This is on the graphing multimeter, right? See, it says it right there, graphing meter. I would not want to use that one because I need to see signals that are faster than that. So I can't use the map. And you might be thinking, why don't you use the camera crank? I can do that, but there are going to be times where you want to do this that there's no heading for what you're picking. We just need to get into the scope. So can I use the crank or cam? I can do that. I don't want the crank test or frequency test. That's going to put me in the graphing multimeter again. I want to see the signature of this waveform where we see real fast time bases in detail. If I view the meter here, I'll show you the difference with this one. Notice my time base settings. I can go way down to 50 microseconds now. This is, this is the one I want. So we want to work with this channel and we're going to set up two channels. And we'll set this one up to, it's going to, going to be a 5 volt square wave. So I'll set these up to 10 volts each, changing what their settings were. There's a trigger set there. As long as my trigger is set to auto, then I'm okay with that trigger. We have to check that though, because it might have changed. Good. We're on an auto trigger. That's good. And as far as time base goes, this will be pretty decent. But what this will allow me to do is to take this meter and minimize it or open up a separate tab. So see that window right there? Now with that window open, we can minimize it, hit the home tab, go back to our scanner, go back to our, not back to, or go to our data display. And then what we'll have the ability to do here is look at live data we need to show our desktop here. Am I catching that? No, I'm cutting that part off. I am. We need to show the desktop. 
with the desktop shown, I have a window down here I can pull up. And so now I can look at scope and scan tool at the same time. Did you see the steps I had to do to, do to get in to do that? If we would have just went to the scope multimeter, we would not have the ability to minimize that window. That's why I went through the component test meter, okay? Why do I want to do that? I just think it'll be cool for what we're doing to be able to show the scan tool. And primarily, our focus is cam and crank. So let's uh, customize this data list and pull up the cam and the crank data parameters. Those are the two main ones that I want to, want to look at. Hit list view and they just say yes or no. And then what we'll do is we'll look at the actual signals live. Now we have live data on, on the scan tool and we have live scope stuff going on here. So let's start this thing up, see how she reacts. All right, you guys can see on this waveform that we're looking at cam and crank. The yellow is the crank, the green is the cam. And really what we're waiting for is for this car to die on us again and see what we're losing. There's a lot of different things we can, we can do with the cam crank. You know, we can change our time base if we want to, if you want to see more of it. Remember though, as you increase your time base settings, that the scope will start to alias on you, which is what you're looking at now. All right, you see the yellow trace looks like it's dropping out. It's not. If I peak detect that, you see it comes back again. So there's issues with sampling and time base. I don't want to be up on that kind of scale. We want uh, both detail and repetition when it comes to this signal. Remembering too that I have this buffer, let me show you guys the buffer for a second. The way that I would look at this waveform is I would probably want it on that setting to catch this issue because what's going to happen when I stop it, I can zoom and then what I'll have is the ability to look at the repetition, look at all the collected data that's in there. So this is where I was and this is what's in the buffer. That's going to be ideal for what we're looking at. And maybe we don't need quite that much, so I'm going to, going to jack it up just a little bit. We'll go, we'll go on the 50 millisecond. I like that one. And now at this point, it's a waiting game. We make this thing die and not start. We'll see what we're missing. We have a crank sensor trouble code, but you have to be careful with these on Chrysler's because you can actually have a cam sensor drop out that sets a crank code, or you can have a crank sensor drop out that sets a cam code. We use these as a guide, but we don't put all of our trust in that trouble code. We want to see which one we're losing. I'm pretty sure that we are going to see it, and I'm also pretty sure when we lose the signal that something erratic is going to be happening here based on our relays that we're clicking on and off. Okay, I'm going to see if I can make this thing die by revving it up a little bit. Don't overanalyze this yellow trace on here. You see some of those signals look like they were dropping out. That's just a that's just a sampling. When I'm raising this RPM, the frequency of the signal is greater than the sample rate and we're missing, there we go, nice. As you can see, uh, the car died. We have our problem. I was actually able to catch it on camera, which was awesome. You hear the relays clicking and, and I'll, I'll pull those out so you can see. This is the fuel pump ASD relays pull them both out from the clicking to stop. If I put one in, you hear the clicking. If I put the other in, you hear the clicking. So what does that tell us? That tells us that our computer is controlling both of them at the same time, okay? I'm gonna pull those out just to save our battery. Look at the scan tool. The yellow trace, if you remember, was our crank, right? And the green trace was our cam. And I said, based on the symptoms, that we were going to have some type of crazy RPM signal going on when this happened. Look at the cam sensor. The cam on the scan tool is saying yes, right? 
and the crank saying no, well, of course I don't have a signal. The car is not started or running. The crank or cam aren't moving. I should not have a signal in this cam sensor right now, and I do. So remember what code we had in memory. This is perfect for, for this. What code did we have? We had a crank sensor trouble code. Why is the computer saying there's a crank sensor fault? Because it is seeing a cam signal, misinterpreting a quote, good cam signal, and it's not seeing a crank sensor signal. So what code does it say? Crank sensor fault. This is a cam sensor fault, as noted by the scope. Is it important to scope test these and, and do tests rather than change a part on a trouble code? I think so. Uh, I'll be surprised if this ends up being a crank. This looks like a cam sensor fault to me. What I can do to maybe prove it is I'll reach underneath and uh, you see that signal changing there. I'll reach underneath and grab the cam sensor and uh, see if I can make that signal go away. And you guys can just watch that. The cam sensor's over here. And I'm just going to touch it. Oh, is that the connector? Maybe what I'll try to do is I'll try to unplug it if I can get to it. Doesn't look like that's going to be easily done here. I'm going to have to at some point. This thing's hot now, too. Um, that's pretty cool, though, isn't it? Let's put these relays back in so you can hear it. It just stopped. It just stopped, and the car should probably start. Can you try to start that for me? So it's heat related. I'm gonna get the battery charger back on this for when this dies again. We'll just put it on a low trickle charge. What I'm going to do is uh, wiggle the wiring for this, this cam sensor. No change in there. I get this thing hot again. While this is running, nice. Stay right there for me for a second, please. Cool. It won't start now. You can try to start it. Go ahead. Keep cranking it. <laughs> that for that second there, what you saw is I had a good crank signal and the cam signal was all wigged out. This is definitely a cam sensor fault, not a crank sensor fault.
Exactly. Awesome. Definitely can see the cam sensor dropping out. Really, the only thing we need to do is to unplug the cam sensor while it's doing this and, and verify that we have not, none of that crap in there. And if we don't, then we're going to, we're going to be comfortable putting a, a cam sensor in this. Although, you know, as I'm thinking about this, what we need to verify while this cam sensor is acting up is that we're not losing our, our, our nine volt feed and our ground to this sensor because that can, well, not the ground, the ground missing wouldn't pull it to ground. This is a pull down design circuit. Our concern here is our, is our feed. And I better look at that. So I'm, I'm going to pull in a third channel Oh, no, that's okay with the key on. I mean, basically the computer thinks the car is running. I think it's cool though that what we're looking at here, guys, is we're looking at a, a car that has no cam sensor trouble code at all and has a crank code, an ASD relay code, and an alternator field code. And uh, none of those are the problem. All of this is related. All right, I gotta use a jumper wire to get to this, guys, because I, my leads aren't long enough. This, one of my main complaints with the Varus is the, is the length of the leads. They're just not long enough for a lot of the tests that we do. So this one's going to be the nine volt feed or supply, if you wanna call it, to this Hall Effect. Just in case my desktop recording is not working. I'm hoping it was the whole time. This is what we're looking at. Green trace is the cam. Yellow trace is the crank. I'm going to turn a third channel on and this third channel is just going to be voltage. And there's my nine volt feed. Blue trace up here is my nine volt feed the same time we have our cam sensor signal acting up. <clears throat> Again, I'm not worried about a ground here because a bad ground would be an open circuit. We would not be pulling this to ground. This green circuit is a pull down type switch input design. Computer sends five volts to the sensor and sensor pulls it to ground. If we had a bad ground to this sensor, we would not be pulling to ground. Therefore, I'm not worried about the ground. For those of you that are skeptical, watch the blue line. I'll move this to the ground pin just to make you guys happy. But I'm telling you that this is not necessary. I think this might be the signal wire. Nope, that's the ground pin right there. What do you see on the ground? The same time we have this noise, zero volts. That is a good ground. The only thing that we're worried about now is going to be the sensor circuit integrity. In other words, could that signal wire be touching ground? I have nothing connected to this channel anymore, so ignore this blue trace. I'm turning it off. Could we have a wiring problem where this thing's touching ground, rubbing on ground? We could, and here's how we're going to prove it. I'm going to disconnect the, the cam sensor itself to eliminate the sensor from this circuit. Remember, it's pull down design. All right, cam sensor's unplugged. If we had a harness problem, remember this is a pull down circuit design. If we had a harness problem, we would still have our issue here. We would still see that noise that's in this circuit. I have the sensor disconnected. You guys saw it there. Let me show you over here. All right, cam sensor connector. It's right here. Just gonna plug that back in. Hopefully it's still hot enough to do its thing. And I plugged it back in and my issue is no, there we go, it's back. All right, cool. So hot sensor, acts up, 
sensor cools off and it works good. Disconnect this. No question about it, faulty cam sensor. So review here, trouble codes on these Chryslers. I've mentioned this numerous times. Don't rely on trouble codes on these Chrysler systems. Use your cam crank trouble code as a guide. Let me go back to our codes menu here. Now we may have a cam fault now because I was unplugging it. We don't. PO320 and then my auto shutdown relay fault. We had a generator field code, that one's missing, but remember my battery died. So that generator field circuit code, remember the ASD relay also powers up the generator circuit. So this ASD relay output voltage at the PCM, yeah, of course that's gonna set that code because what's the ASD relay doing? You can hear it in the camera, click, click, click on and off, right? When it shouldn't be. Computer thinks the car is running and the ASD relay is turning on and off. So it's, it's almost some programming issues here that we're fighting. But imagine going into this and not knowing this stuff. We have a crank trouble code and an ASD trouble code. No reference whatsoever to the cam. This is the difference between troubleshooting and parts changing. Anybody can read a fault code and change a part. You would not have fixed this car with that. I said one final comment. That's not going to be it. Let's throw a cam sensor in this car and fix the thing. Uh, it's really not necessary, but I know a lot of you like to see a fix and, and you know what, we'll do it. So we'll put a cam sensor in this and I'll show you the fix. All right, I've had this car running now with the new cam sensor installed for at least 45 minutes with no problem whatsoever. So you guys are going to have to take my word that this vehicle is fixed. I don't have a run timer on the scan data to show you how long I've been running it. Just to review a few things. One of them was looking at the cam sensor. If you guys remember, the cam sensor was saying yes while the engine was off. So that was a clue that we had a cam sensor fault. The other thing we don't want to do again on these is to rely totally on these data PIDs, the yes of the cam and crank. We want to use them as a guide only. Chryslers are notorious for having cam sensor faults, set crank sensor codes as you saw, and having crank sensor faults, set cam sensor codes. If this was a coil over plug engine, the activity that was going on with the cam sensor has the potential to cause the computer to fire all of the coils randomly. And what will happen, I've seen this before, I think it's on a Jeep, the vehicle comes in and the coil fuse is blown. And the reason the coil fuse is blown is the coils are firing together at times with just the key on and it overloads the circuit. The circuit was never designed to carry that kind of amperage. It was designed to carry one coil current pattern at a time. And when the cam sensor wigs out, that's what it does. So look for that. Hope you guys like that. There's really not much, I, much else I can show you other than this is known good waveforms on the cam crank. Get you just one last zoomed out picture and then we'll wrap this up. Pause it there for a second. The cam design is a one, two, three, one, two space. That's your cam pulse. The crank design on this is groupings of four. So that's it, 2003 Caravan with a faulty cam sensor.